Jesu. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor, neighbors are black and white, neighbors are near and far away. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have for you. These are the ones we would serve. These are the ones we should love. All oh, these are neighbors to us and to you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. When I was a child, second or third grade, I took an achievement test. And one of the statements was true or false. A neighbor is someone who lives close to you. My mother was a teacher at the time and she didn't like for me to miss any questions, especially if I knew the answer. So she said, why did you put false? I said, because our neighbors don't live anywhere near us. <clears throat> and she said, this test is regionally biased. If you've ever lived in the South, that you know that some words are different. For example, the word toboggan here in the North obviously is a sled, but a toboggan in the South means a knit cap you wear in the winter. So sometimes words d differ in the region. So let's look at the word neighbor. What is a neighbor? Who is a neighbor? The Bible gives us some information about a neighbor. Jesus broke it down for us. One day in the Gospel of Matthew, an attorney, a lawyer, comes to him and says, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment, thinking he's going to trap him? And Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Well, anyone would have understood that. It's on their doorpost. They knew that by heart. And Jesus added the word mind which I think is very significant in this day and age where some people are suspicious of science. We also love God with our reason, with our mind. And he didn't stop there. He said, and you love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two hang all the law and all the prophets. So if we get those two right, then we've got it down. We've got the whole Bible down. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But in the Gospel of Luke, it's a little different. The question is different. Also, a lawyer comes to him and says, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So the question's different. And Jesus turns it back on him. You know the law. What does it say? So the lawyer said, you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, those four, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, so do this and you shall live. He knew that because it's not just a set of beliefs. Love is a verb. Do this and you shall live. Well, the lawyer ever looking for a loophole said, who is my neighbor? So Jesus told the most famous story in the Bible. I think it's one of the most famous. And I could read it to you from the scripture, but you could read it yourself. It's Luke chapter 10. I think it's good to tell it because it was a story. It was a story of a man who was going down the road and he was struck by robbers who stole his money and who beat him. He was left on the side of the road to die and along came a priest, ouch, who went to the other side of the road, didn't bother entering that protest, 
decided to be safe. He saw him, but he went to the other side of the road. Then came a Levite, the one who keeps the purity of the temple law. He also went to the other side of the road, didn't want to get involved. Well, we don't know their motives, but we know these two didn't stay. They saw him and they walked ahead. And then along came a Samaritan. He saw him and he stopped and he not only did he bind up his wounds, but he put him on his animal and he brought him to the inn, to the hospital, and he paid for the treatment and he told the innkeeper, I'll be back. Whatever it costs, I'll pay for it. That's the end of the story. And Jesus said, so who was the neighbor to the one who fell among the robbers? Now remember the question, who is my neighbor? Who was the neighbor to the one who fell among the robbers? So who are you in this scenario? You are not the Good Samaritan. You are the one who was robbed. I think that's important because when we realize we have been in need, we tend to give to others. So the lawyer said, the one who helped, the Samaritan who helped. So Jesus made it very simple. He made it so that any of us could understand. Even a child can get the gist of the Good Samaritan. Our neighbors are sometimes near, they're sometimes far. Our neighbors are sometimes black, they're sometimes white, they're sometimes rich, they're sometimes poor. A man several years ago, a pastor by the name of Fred Rogers, right here in Pennsylvania, across the state, Pittsburgh, a little ways from Lancaster, has that famous song that came into our television set, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Won't You Be Mine? So that's my question for us today. Won't you be my neighbor? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a beautiful day in this beauty world, a beautiful day for a beauty. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? I always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Would you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be? My name.